All right, this is meant to be a video about um, resurrecting power tools from the dark ages of uh, battery tech using decent batteries from nowadays. Got talking with uh, my buddy Jim about back when batteries looked like this and they came in cases like this or like this or like this and they just kind of sucked and we just had to live with it and we had tools that were you know getting to be just about perfectly good like this thing here but the batteries were just garbage and now they're all sitting on shelves and this is a very low mileage specimen care of my mother and uh, yeah I know it doesn't have a chuck right now but uh, then here's another one hand me down from my dad and they're like good for nothing because the batteries are shot. Uh, this was uh, given by someone else and this Makita has the most beefy drivetrain inside. It's got a good little motor, all gear reduction. I think it's pinion gears rather than uh, planetary. At any rate, I want to resurrect it for a kind of the archaeological significance. But Today's project is this sucker. You know, mediocre Black & Decker, but from before they cheaped them out too much. And uh, it's actually got a pretty decent sized motor. I think this case is all unscrewed. Decent sized motor, single speed uh, planetary reduction gearbox, and a variable speed trigger. It's only rated to go something like 700 RPM at 9 volts or 9.6 volts but I uh, pulled out this little MOSFET is doing the speed control I presume from my limited grasp of this stuff and uh, I pulled its spec sheet and it's good up to 60 volts so no way I'm sticking with nine and a half um, the battery pack was unfortunately oh, it was just horribly put together and the whole thing I had to cut it apart with uh, our friend hot knife through plastic so that was a stinky messy mess but came apart all right this pack isn't uh, so this is the uh, sorry this is the original pack that lived in there and you know, obviously the top most one went into the pokey up thing and there are eight of these sub C these are called they're smaller than C cell there's some mysterious configuration they come in different lengths like uh, there's a sub C and there's a four-fifths sub C like some kind of tribute to the American measuring gods at any rate dysfunctional to say the least um, you can see that they would make packs of a certain number of cells they must have put what one two three six of them in series to get up to 7.2 volts and then they would add two more to get the 9.6 volt packs this one is a 9.6 volt pack that went one two three four five six seven eight all in series and uh, it was actually really well put together there was a heat shrink around it and padding top and bottom. Yeah, it was nice. It was a well-built pack destined to last all of, I don't know, maybe a full year and a half before it was no good to anyone ever again. And uh, so this drill has sat on a shelf for the last 10 or 12 years waiting for lithium-ion cells to become so ubiquitous that you can pretty much pull them out of the trash or you can at least pick up a rigid pack that has been discharged beyond what the charger will tolerate by a flaw in the BMS design. Urgh, come on, don't make me get another hand. This was a hand-me-down, I think from Jim Thompson. Thank you, Jim. And stole the cells out of it. I think I fixed one of them and uh, strapped one or two and 
these are some of the tested good cells that came out of it. So 18650 cells are 18 millimeters by 65 millimeters. Test them with a some kind of an intelligent charger discharger tester. Make sure they've got similar capacity. These four are a good match and so I'm going to try to wire them up in uh, series and stuff them into here and I'm also going to add in this XT60 connector inside so that I have a means of charging it. I'm not, I think, I'm not going to bother with a BMS on this. It's not really going out into the world to play with normal tools so I don't really have to care and uh, <clears throat> these four I ran a bunch of cycles they stay pretty balanced with each other and so I think I'm just going to opt for cheap and simple which is in fact what I did with this rigid uh, this was a nine and a half nine point six volt tool using a NICAD pack and uh, I opened it and sorry for the handheld it also has come on it has a charge port on the front and a reminder to keep it covered so it has a little butt plug to keep keep it safe. The reason being, these, um, this particular style of XT connector that I found that is panel mount, those are, those are the live battery contacts and it'd be pretty easy to short them with anything metal. So if I'm going to use them, because they're what I've got, I want to make a cover. And so I just made a cover out of a the male half, female half, I don't know how you want to... Alright, so this one I was able to fit six cells in, so it's 3S, 2P, 11 or 12 volts, depending on how you look at it. Um, but it's just, it happens to be a better shape. And uh, it's got no BMS, it's also got way more capacity than this glorified screwdriver needs. I think I charged this thing about twice a year, use it whenever I feel like. And uh, so it's been good, and I thought I would use the same logic on this one, but I don't have much space in the pack. Um, I can just cram four cells into this case, so I'm gonna wire all four of them in series, and then I'll get a 16 volt pack, more or less, that'll spin this drill a whole bunch faster than its original 700 RPM. So I'm going to start to assemble these into uh, something resembling the pack. Okay, a little bit of fiddling later and uh, here are the four cells spot welded together. And uh, for the sake of safety-fying, glue some of this uh, insulator paper onto the, that end. Make another one for the other end. Now I'm going to solder a couple leads on, so now this is four of them in series, get 16 volts out of there, and uh, I'll solder a couple leads that'll go down to here, and the other two will go straight to this, and that'll become the top of the pack. Okay, a few minutes of uh, fiddly soldering later, and a bunch of wrapping up the connections to insulate. Now you can see the charge port is wired in parallel with the white and black that run up to the top and the whole thing just oh yeah there's a piece of uh found some wooden dowel that's about the same size as a sub c cell and so that makes up the uh the missing stack height that needs to uh needs to push up in order to maintain those two contacts in the neck of the thing. So, it's uh, almost perfect, but I've got just, just a little bit short on stack height. If I arrange everything just perfect, I can almost get it closed, but not quite far enough for it to uh, latch into the pack. So, makes contact, proof of concept, but, pardon me, so, drilling 
drill is working, if I could choose a direction. So I still have decent speed control and higher speed than previously. The whole thing is uh, working fine. I've noticed that the uh, whatever the circuitry that does the um, speed variation seems to kind of hunt. Oh no, it's not doing it. No, it seems pretty smooth. When I was testing it, just to make sure that the MOSFET was happy at 16 volts, it seemed to be hunting, but maybe I just had a loose connection. So this looks uh, pretty promising. Just got a little bit of fiddling to get. I'm missing like a millimeter here in order for the whole thing to work. And then uh, JB weld it together. Here's the plug that covers up the uh, too easy to short charger port. And this is just a, these are called uh, XT60 connectors. They're made by uh, a mass and a multitude of copycats. They're uh, common, they're ubiquitous and dirt cheap in uh, the world of uh, RC and portable lithium polymer batteries and the like. Um, so if you're gonna, I'm pretty happy with them. These XT60s handle like uh, 50 amps steady. So for the price, they're hard to beat and they're compact for little projects like this. So there you go. Okay, come on. Oh, little triumphant spin. Grr. So back to life after sitting on a shelf for the better part of a decade. Farewell, NICADs. Welcome to the real world.